Hey again everyone, Tim here from Tim'sComputerFix.net. Today I have a HP All-in-One. It's a Pavilion 23. This is model number H017C. And what's going on with this guy is uh, we're just not getting any power at all. And uh, if you look on the back here, we're plugged in. No problem there. There's usually a little green light or a charging light or a power light here showing that it's plugged in. I'm getting nothing there. And if we come around and look here, I've got it, I've got it plugged in. And I have uh, I've tested the power adapter and I'm getting 19 volts. No problem there. Um, but we press our power. And we don't get any likes, any activity, anything at all. Um, not really sure what's going on with that. But what we're going to do is uh, strip this thing down and we'll find out. And we'll take you along for the ride. Okay, so what we're going to go ahead and do here, we're going to just lay the computer down on its face and I've got these rubber mats here to protect the front surface of it. All right what we're going to go ahead and do here there are two screws on either side here we're going to go ahead and take off. Okay, we take these, start loosening these screws, you can see where it's kind of pushing up a bit on the, on the case. Same thing on this side over here. You can see the case starting to separate. So we're just going to run a spudger down. It kind of unsnaps. this side and you can see here how that screw has started to separate here take our spudger just kind of unsnaps yep okay Unsnapped. Stand it upside right. So we're loose down here now. Come down on this side. here. Lay it back down. You don't want to pry up on it. I'm just trying to unsnap it. There we go. And that comes off like so. Okay. So just these two screws at the bottom and that'll put a gap you run your spudger around and just unsnap it gently and that gives you access to everything underneath so we're going to investigate uh, a little further here okay so you can see here where our power was plugging in at we're going to test for voltage there to be sure there's voltage getting through the board so we need to take this cover off here 
Looks like we got a screw here to take loose. Screw here to take loose. And it looks like this cover might. And screw here to take loose. It looks like we might be able to lift this cover off and have a little bit of a closer look. So a little word of warning here, once you get these three screws removed, you may feel a bit of tension like something's not giving way. You have to kind of work this gently back and forth because there is some type of tape. Slide it back. There's some tape that was kind of holding it down. So but we got that off. it up gently and that now exposes the motherboard for the motherboard here and the RAM and now we can start to investigate uh, power here and see why there's not uh, see why this guy's not coming on so as you can see here we've got uh, again our power a power jack which looks like looks like it's in good shape our entire motherboard um, Everything looks intact visually. Processor and heat sink. Um, so it looks like uh, we'll investigate this power jack a little bit better. I want to want to kind of test voltage here to be sure it's indeed getting power to the board. So that'll be my next that'll be my next step here. So I'll probably just begin to start to take off things off the board and uh, maybe if I can get on the underside here I can test for proper voltage going to going to the motherboard and we'll show you how to do that. Right so really before I I'm going to have to remove this board and and test for voltage on the underside of this power jack to be sure that there's proper power going through the jack to the board. Before I do that, I just kind of want to eliminate uh, want to eliminate other components as maybe being the problem of why it won't start. So um, we'll start off by disconnecting the stuff from the motherboard and see if we can't get it to power up. I first got to determine uh, which one of these is the actual power button. So we'll determine that first. Okay. Okay, I've determined which one is the power button. Our, our power button is up here. And we just follow this cable on around, on around. And there's another cable which goes to the webcam here. And they both come out into here. So here we have the power button and the webcam. So we're going we're gonna to leave the power button attached. I'll just go ahead and leave the webcam attached too. We, pretty confident there that the webcam is not causing the issue um, at least for now and uh, we'll go ahead and, and disconnect these other ones this goes to various other things uh, card card adapter hard drive um, various undress we'll we'll go ahead speakers we'll go ahead and unplug all of those and see if we can get it to fire off one quick note here is we also have the the fan the fan connector here we're definitely going to going to leave that plugged in that goes to our processor fan there so that'll stay plugged in also
So I've got everything removed from the board. I've opted out of removing the speaker connector here because, well, it's it's sort of not tightly secured to the board. It's, it's just held on by a couple of uh, feet there. So I, I opted just to save face, not to go to pulling on that. So the odds of the speakers being the, being the problem of why the computer won't even boot or give power is slim to none, I would say. Uh, and I've left these two cables here plugged in, um, power and and uh, webcam. And I've also left the CPU fan plugged in. So what I want to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and just uh, make sure all the cables are out of the way. And I'm just going to go ahead and plug this guy in. And getting no motherboard lights at the moment, of course. We'll expect two. Let's see. So uh, I'm just going to reach over here and press the power button. And we have nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. No power. Let me unplug it. Let me remove. Pull this memory out, this memory slot here out. Just for giggles, plug it in. We have nothing. Nothing, nothing. Might be a bad board. I'm going to. I'm going to remove this board, flip it over, and see if we can't measure voltage off the power jack and that'll be if we're getting voltage to the power jack through the jack to the board I measure voltage again to the power adapter itself I'm getting 19 volts I mean there's a there's a possibility that it may not be getting enough amperage um, but I can test that theory with another adapter um, odds are that the adapter is okay so, uh, pot, there's a center pin there on that adapter that sends a signal to the board on some HPs. That's what the center pin's for. It could be a slight possibility that uh, that signal's not being sent. I'm just thinking out loud. So, let's, uh, let's see if we've got voltage to the board. Okay, looks like to get the motherboard off here. There's of course motherboard screws. Motherboard screws. Motherboard screws there. And it looks like we got to remove the heat sink. These four screws first. And then there's another screw here holding this heat. This heat, this whole heat sink has got to come off. So with this processor will start off. We're going to use a flathead screwdriver. These have a, a special special screw heads. Well, I'll show you here when one comes off here. But we'll start off with the processor heat sink. We'll start off on one corner. A couple turns. We'll go to the next opposite corner. A couple turns corner a couple of turns and then opposite corner a couple of turns yep all right and I'm going to go ahead and come over here I'm going to go ahead and come over here and take this one screw off so I don't bend the heat sink and I'll show you real quick the kind of screw heads that this is using. I don't have a bit actually to fit that, but uh, but a uh, flathead flathead will work just fine. All right. So then we'll continue with the processor. A couple more turns here. A couple more turns here. Yeah, 
so that thermal the thermal paste is the thermal paste has gotten this guy pretty much adhered. Here it goes. Notice how I wasn't pulling up on this end. I was just pulling up dead center. I don't want to bend the heat sink. I mean, hopefully I can bring this back to life, but if not, we'll investigate what maybe another board may cost, possibly. Don't know. So I'll take that off, and there we go. There's our heat sink. Ooh, I see. Looks like a rivet. Looks like I got a rivet right here. How about that? Eh, there's a plastic screw head. Interesting. Right next to the memory. Huh. This required to be removed. Um, yeah, so now the board is, is, is free. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect those two cables there. I'm still going to leave that speaker connected down here it's a little bit of a it's no big deal pay attention to how my wires are routed here okay and I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the processor heatsink and we're going to flip this guy over pull him up we'll flip him over this way Okay, so directly under here, there's our power jack. And you can see here, this is how it's soldered to the board. So we're going to put a voltmeter here. First, I'm going to check to see, test for positive, negative, and uh, positive, negative. We're going to see which ones are positive. And negative. We're going to check for ground. Which ones are the ground ones? So I know which which lead to to test. Um, sort of a sort of a different, strange type of a power jack going to a motherboard. Um, so I think if I determine which one is the negative, then we'll be able to uh, apply voltage and test to see if it's getting proper power. Since I'm not able to actually move the board because of this cable here that I just that I opted to keep plugged in, you can unplug that if you feel comfortable doing so. I'm going to just lay down an anti-static uh, mat here so I can rest the board on top of that so I don't short anything out when I apply power. Alright, so let's see if I can get you a closer look and I'm going to test for voltage. Uh, got my voltmeter here. So we're going to test for continuity. Nothing's plugged in. We're going to test for continuity. I need to find out which one of these leads. There are several of them probably that are negative. Which ones are negative is what I want to know right now. So, okay. So, when I need to determine is is which one of these legs that come through the board is is a negative lead uh, a good way to do that I mean if, if you touch a negative lead on a motherboard any ground on a, on a on a motherboard or any PCB board is always going to 
test continuity on all the ground leads around the entire board itself. So I'll give you an example. Um, I can touch any, any, any place where your screws go in are always grounded. So I can touch this screw uh, eyelet in this one and I get continuity. That's a ground lead. If I touch other so, some of these other components I get continuity and some not. That means that it's not a negative, it's a positive. Up, oh, there's a negative point there on that little component I found. All right, so you can find negative and positives that way. This pad here is negative. This pad here is positive. Um, that goes the same with any. You can go around to any metal point on the board. It's actually copper. Or I'll go over here and I'll touch the back plate to the processor. It's also conductive on the negative side of the board. So that's a good way. You always know negative. So, so with my lead here on this eyelet, screw, screw eyelet that I know is negative, I'm going to go around and touch the feet where the power jack is to determine which ones are negative. Okay, so there's a negative. And there's a negative. Okay, so I would probably say that's a positive. And I would, let's see, no, let's see. Nope, that's a negative. And that's a negative. And this little small one here. Okay, so we got negative, negative, positive, negative, negative. And then this little guy here, I'm thinking that this little guy here is probably the, the data line for the center pin right here. So these two, I know not to cross this and this or any of these negative points. If I cross them with power it's going to go pow. It's going to short. Okay so now I know. See I can touch the center pin here which is positive and none of these negatives none of these positives none of these negatives I mean will do anything. But as soon as I touch a negative to an, and go negative I'll get continuity. See there? Not here. So now I know. These two in the middle, we don't want to cross with these ones on the end. Got it. Now we can plug in our power and test for voltage. Oh, okay. Just to show that uh, we do have voltage on our power adapter. We're just going to test that. Got our voltmeter here. Positive into positive into positive. Okay. And negative to negative. And there's our 19 volt showing there on the voltmeter. Okay. So we've got voltage, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually plug, plug our adapter up. Nothing metal touching anything of any sorts. So we'll just plug our adapter up here. Okay. Okay, now 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 we're, now our power adapter is live and we know which ones are positive and negative. And our voltmeter is now ready to test. So we know which ones not to cross. So I'm saying that this guy here is the positive and then there's a negative one here. And it looks like 
I'm not getting any that may be the there's a possibility that this one is the data transfer so let's try be very careful here not to cross things up let's try let's try that one this one here I'm, let's see still not getting voltage still not getting voltage okay let's try this one again just to be sure scratch it a little bit sometimes there'll be a little bit of flux or something keeping a good connection from happening so we'll try here 0.35 is all I'm getting notice let's see. 0 0.3 0 0.3 0 0.2 0 0.3 I think we found our problem try over here point three point three doesn't matter where you try I think we found our problem definitely so even though our power adapter measured even though our power adapter let's see what it measures now it's a flaky adapter let's see what it measures Let's see what our adapter measures now. Here, and here. Ah, see there? Now it's only measuring, I'm using the adapter, and it's only measuring 0.26. Now, the original reading you saw was measuring a full 19 volts. Okay, so there's a good lesson for anybody troubleshooting um, motherboards. With power jacks and these power adapters sometimes just because you measure it straight from the power adapter itself and you're getting 19 volts does not always mean that your that your power adapter is good because uh, basically there's a, a wattage amps comes through these and it needs the proper amount of amps and, and a lot of times I'll do as I just did there I'll take the extra step to um, actually test volt, plug it in to the board and test voltage on the bottom side of the board to be sure that it's transferring the voltage properly. And a lot of times, something when a when a power adapter is having issues uh, with amperage, when you plug it in like that, a lot of times is whenever it'll show itself, as it just did. So, lesson learned here. We need to order a new power adapter. New power adapter, we'll get her a new power adapter here and uh, we'll put this guy back together and she'll fire right up. Okay guys, I've got my new power brick in, just came in. So now we're gonna do the moment of truth here. I'm gonna just flip this back and we're going to plug in our adapter. And oh, look at there. There's our light. That's what we wanted. So all we have to do now, power the system on. Got lights there too. Awesome. We have power. Yep, just goes to show, can't always trust those, uh, when those voltmeters, when those, those voltmeters test 19 volts on these power adapters always test voltage going to the board because a lot of because not a lot of times but in rare occasions it can lead you down a, a bad road it uh, the amperage won't be right on a on a on a power break this this gone faulty so hey thanks for uh, thanks for watching my video I really appreciate it and uh, I hope this helps somebody out. I'll be making more videos here soon. Please rate and subscribe. I really would appreciate that, man. I appreciate all the support. Thanks, guys. Uh, see you next time.